in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to automate mouse clicks by using PyAuto GUI. Hello humans, I'm Kyle and welcome to Code for Humans, the channel that teaches you how to code. In this tutorial, we're going to be going over PyAuto GUI, which is a macro library for Python. Macros are software that automate mouse clicks and keyboard events like typing or hitting hotkeys, stuff like that. So PyAuto GUI is very useful for situations where you can't directly interface with something. For example, let's say my boss gave me an Excel sheet and he said, enter all of this information into a website, but the website doesn't accept Excel files. So instead of typing everything manually, you can have Python read the Excel file and then use PyAuto GUI to simulate the mouse clicks and typing into the website so you don't have to do it by hand. So to install PyAuto GUI, all we have to do is pip install it. And the command for that is pip install PyAuto GUI. If you don't know how to pip install, I'll link you something down in the description that shows you how to pip install. But assuming you have that done, we can just say import PyAuto GUI and we are good to go. The first thing I'm going to show you is the position function. So I can say PyAuto GUI dot position, and this will tell me the current X, Y coordinates of my cursor. So all I'm going to do is I'll wrap this in a print call. That way we can actually see it on our screen. So I'll run our code and you can see I was 433 pixels to the right and 134 pixels down. So this is good and all, but it's more useful if it's in a loop. So let me show you what we can do. I'll say for I in range 20, and then I'm going to move this over. So now what'll happen is our code will run 20 times and print a position each time, but it's gonna be a little bit too fast. So I'm going to import time. Time is built into Python, so no pip install is necessary. But once we've done that, we can say time.sleep 0.5. So now our code's going to print a position of our cursor and then wait half a second and then print again and then wait half a second and over and over and over again. So when we run our code, we can see the position is now printing out. And as I move my cursor around the screen, the position is changing. This is useful for when trying to find a position of elements on your screen that you want to click on. So let's say there's a button at 214, 857 that I want to click on. How do I get my cursor to move there? Well, I'll delete this and I'll say pyautogui dot move to. So this takes two things, the X and Y coordinate of the position we want to move to. So I'll say 214, 857. And now when I run the code, watch what happens to my cursor. So right now it's up here. And when I press F5 to run this, it snaps down here to the bottom. And that's because it moved to the position that we gave it. Well, we don't always want to move to an absolute position. Sometimes we want to move to a relative one. And by that, I mean, let's say I like where my cursor is now. I just want to move it up a few pixels and to the right a few pixels. So the way we do that is we say move rel, move relatively to the current position of my cursor. So I'll say move to the, let's say move to the right 50 pixels and down 300 pixels. So now I'm going to press F5 to run our code. And you can see my cursor snapped to the right a little bit and down quite a bit. That's because it moved relative to its current position to the right 50 pixels and down 300. Now that we know how to position the cursor, we can actually start clicking. So the way we do that is we say pyatogui.click. And all this will do is it'll left click once when this line of code runs. Alternatively, I could just delete our move statement altogether and say that I want to click at an X coordinate of 200 and a Y coordinate of 500. So instead of saying move to 200, 500, I can actually just say click and specify my location and then just click once it's there. So if I run this, you can see my mouse cursor snapped over here and I did click. It's kind of hard to tell if it's clicking through video, but you'll just have to trust me on that one. Another thing we can do is we don't have to left click. We can also specify the button. So the click command has a bunch of different keyworded parameters. So button is one of those and we can give it a string. And that is which button on our mouse do we want to press? And I'll say my button is right. So now when we run this, my code is going to make my mouse right click at this position. And that's why you see this menu drop down. Alternatively, we don't have to just click one time. We can click many times. So I'll say clicks is equal to two and the interval between clicks is 0 0.25. So now my code is going to double click my mouse 
and it's going to wait a quarter second in between each click. So that's why we get this weird highlighted section. That's because my code was double clicking down below. The last thing I'll show you is the pause constant. So instead of using import time, I can actually just say pyautogui.pause. So this is a constant that's defined in pyautogui, and pretty much all we need to do with it is say equals 0 0.25. So what's gonna happen now is in between each click or between each move to or between each typewrite, whatever pyautogui command we're using, there's gonna be a 0.25 second delay in between each action. This is to slow down your code because our macros can run super fast, but websites can only take information so quickly. So sometimes we need to slow down our code to allow the website to keep up. To demonstrate this, I'll remove this and I'll say move to, and I'll say 100, 200, and then I'll copy this. And what's gonna happen is every time this runs, I'm going to move down a few more pixels. So now if I run this, just watch my cursor. You can see that it goes down in iterations. I'll run that one more time. So every 0.25 seconds, it jumps down to another 100 pixels. But that's it for this tutorial. As always, a big thank you for liking, subscribing, and ringing that bell. Comment below with suggestions for future videos, and I will see you in the next one.